We're at Midwest Gaming Conference. Uh, been here for about 30, 40 minutes. Good part is, is we didn't have to wait outside in the cold. Um, we're up here in Brookfield, Wisconsin, where it's about 21 degrees. And uh, we're in. We got a lot of people here. But so far, so good. We're in the main hall. We're just waiting for him to remove the ropes so we can go running through. So, so far. As you can see, there's a lot of people here, really, really busy. So, as soon as that rope drops, it's on. We're going to pick up some good stuff. We'll be doing some pickup videos, maybe a walkthrough or two. So, see you in a bit. This is actually one of my favorite parts of the show. This is the Classic Gaming Museum. And uh, some of the cool things you see in here is some prototypes. Like the Atari 2800. This never came out. Um, Atari with the keyboard on it. Not aware of this ever came out. Of course, we've got 2600. Playing ET on it. Turbine knows it's the greatest game ever made. Seventy eight hundred classic Ataris, four hundred, eight hundred, that's what I used to have. Come around here, there's some more classic computing, Commodore sixty four. Got the Amiga, Commodore Pet. Got a virtual boy set up over here. Some more. Classic Atari clans, the Intellivisions. Video Brain, that's something we don't see every day. Vectrix. Surprisingly, I'm not seeing a Fairchild uh, Channel F around here. Some more modern and retro. We got an N64 playing GoldenEye. Come over here. Got an F in town, Smarty. You don't see this. Shooter's Alley. This is the original.
original Sega Master System before it was the Master System. Alright, Miss Laying Alex Kid BMX Trial, which was a Japanese only game. I think I'm gonna try it. Hey guys, what's up? Um, I'm trying out a new feature with my phone, so you can actually see my face for once while I'm doing my pickup videos. But um, we went to the Midwest Gaming Conference in Brookfield, Wisconsin over the weekend. And it ran on Saturday and Sunday. We only stayed for Saturday. We had to come home because um, my girlfriend had to go to work today. Luckily, I got two days off too recover from 16 hours of driving plus all the other craziness that went on Saturday. Um, we were there for about four hours and it was just an incredible experience. There was all kinds of neat stuff to see besides the vendor hall. Um, we saw the Nintendo PlayStation prototype. There was a pinball hall that had like pinball machines from 1950s, 1960s all the way up to current. Um, somebody had an original Star Wars pinball machine that they restored to brand new condition that they had out and uh, what else was there? In the gaming museum there was an FM Towns, there was an SG-3000 um, there was a couple of Atari prototypes like the Atari 2800 and then there was this weird keyboard thing so but overall it was a really cool experience and um, while I was there I picked up 13 games out of the 66 on my want list for this year. Um, knocked out a couple really rare Nintendo games, um, regular NES, which I was really proud of. One of them I was blown away to find, and actually Katie, Katie found it for me, bought it, and then brought it to me. So I was really, really impressed by that. And she ended up haggling the guy down like $15. So <laughs> it's pretty cool whenever your girlfriend can get into the game with you and, you know, help you out totally unprovoked. I was just kind of blown away. So, um, anyway, usually I have this video pointing at my bed, but because I don't want you looking at my nose from the front camera and, you know, my double chin and I haven't shaved and I just woke up. So we're going to kind of do the pick up and wave in front thing. So, um, we'll get started. This first game is on Super Nintendo and I wouldn't call it a rare game, but it's definitely uncommon. Um, this is the same company that made Nosferatu, um, Seda, and this game is Musa, M-U-S-Y-A. Um, it's a neat little side-scroller, um, action game. You play this Japanese pike warrior, and you're fighting off ghosts and stuff like that. Um, it's not the easiest game, but... It's definitely not one you see very often. Um, guy had it at 60 and I topped him down to 55 on it. It's got some rear label damage here on the back. As you can see. So it needs a little cleaned up. But the label's real nice. If I can get my damn camera to focus in. But like I said, not really a common game, but pretty neat to have and it's the first time I've ever seen it in person so glad to pick this one up. Second game a lot of people know this one um, it's gone up in value recently but it's a lot of fun and it's a lot more faithful than the Genesis translation 
and that is Sunset Riders. I've been looking for this for a while, and I should have picked it up back whenever it was 50. I ended up paying 80 for this, but um, super clean label, and definitely worth the money as far as you know, play value versus price. So, really glad to finally have this one. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm a huge fan of the Wild Arm series on PlayStation, and I finally got the first Wild Arms. And the cool thing about it, um, I got this actually from Forever Games. They were set up there in Wisconsin, and uh, Matt McClellan, I do believe is his name, is a great guy. I did some trading with him in Cleveland, but uh, it's got the original price tag on it. I thought that was really cool. But um, I got the first Wild Arms, and I got the second Wild Arms, um, grouped them together for me for 50 bucks, which I thought was a pretty decent deal. They're both super clean, great artwork, you know, both have the manuals, discs are nice and clean, so made me a pretty good deal on those. Um, the next game I got is, again, it's not really rare, but it's uncommon. And if anybody knows the story behind this, you know how neat this is actually to have. I got Tingan Tetris. Um, story behind this was is that they released it, and Nintendo cried foul, and it got pulled very, very quickly. But um, the music on this is better, the graphics are better. Um, just overall, it's a superior version to the one that most people know so um, I paid 55 for this really clean label I was very very happy to find it in this condition and I do believe the gentleman's name is David Aguilar I think if um, the forums have taught me anything so I was very happy to find this this one's pretty common but I've been looking for it for a long time um, the clamshell variant of Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Unfortunately, the label on the game's kind of roach, but that seems to be the norm for some reason on this. The manual itself isn't too bad. Um, the case is good. There's a little, you can kind of see it there on the 3. There's a little tear in the artwork, but um, guy cut me a deal on it. I only ended up paying 17 bucks for this. So, Like I said, not a rare game, but definitely one to have in the collection. Up next, another one that's not necessarily rare, but kind of uncommon, especially complete in the box, is Gauntlet 4. Um, unfortunately, there's some permanent marker on the box, which the guy took into consideration whenever I asked for a deal. Um, I talked him down 20 bucks on this, but the box is really in immaculate condition. It's hard to find these cardboard boxes, or they're not completely ruined and with edge wear and stuff. Um, the cartridge and the manual themselves are really nice. The cartridge is very clean. I was assured that there's no tingin rot yet. And uh, the manual's got a couple little bins in it, but nothing major. So, really glad to have this. Mm, you have to excuse me, it's been a long night. Um, next up, I got this from Cerulean Games. Um, I got Shining Force EXA on PlayStation 2. I was very happy to find this. Um, he bundled this up with uh, another game, which I'm going to show next. But um, I have Shining Force Neo. I saw copies of Shining Tears, and I didn't even realize what it was until after I left, and I could kick myself because somebody had it for 10 bucks versus the $20 that I saw in general. So maybe next time, but it's not on my list. But um, I love the Shining series, and I'm really, really happy to have picked this one up. So now we're going to move into the heavy hitting territory. Um, with these, I won't say how much I paid for them, mainly because I got some really great deals on these, and once you start crossing into this territory, it's pretty much everybody knows what this stuff's worth. So um, the first game I'm going to show here is a really great Genesis game from a kick-ass art um, franchise. 
So I got the clamshell version of Castlevania Bloodlines. Um, this is complete in box. The manual and the cartridge are very nice. I picked this up from Cerulean Games, and he bundled this with the Shining Force CXA, and it gave me one hell of a deal on them. So a lot of thanks to um, Joe and Brody for this. Next game I picked up, not, I wouldn't call it rare, but it's definitely up there in price. Um, King of Dragons on Super Nintendo. It's a great game if you like Knights of the Round and you'll love this. It's kind of like the spiritual sequel to it. Very, very clean. I was really happy to pick this up. And I got this bundled with the next game for a pretty good discount. Um, next game is Ghoul Patrol. This is the sequel to Zombies Ate My Neighbors. A lot of people don't know about this, and it's definitely risen in price lately. This used to be about a $90 game, and it's gone up a lot. Um, but really happy to have this. Like I said, I got it bundled with that King of Dragons for a pretty decent price. So Now we're down to the last two. Um, the last two are Nintendo games. And these Nintendo games are... One's really expensive, but I wouldn't consider it that rare because you see it just about every so. The other one, I have never seen in person, except on the internet. So, the first one is actually the more expensive of the two, but the more common of the two. And that's Jetson's Cogswell's Caper. Um, incredibly clean. I mean, I, I was just blown away. This is the first game I bought right out of the gate. I mean, within... 30 seconds I had this game in my possession so um, I won't disclose the price but anybody with a computer on eBay can figure out how much I paid for this um, really great game if you like Mega Man it plays a lot like Mega Man so really really happy to find this and the last game I got I actually I got told Katie I was looking for it and please go around and ask vendors if she could find it. She went to at least three or four different people. Everybody's like, oh man, no, I don't have that. I wish I could find it, blah, blah, blah. So she went all the way in the back. And again, um, David, like I said, I think it's Aguilar. It's his last name. Said, I think I have it. Let me check my stock. Come back later. So he got it and he put it out. And Katie saw it and she's like, dude, I want that. And he had it marked for 125 and she just, uh, I don't know how she did it, but she haggled him down on it. And she got it at the price that I was willing to pay for it, so I ended up paying her back. But, um, get this in the light. I got Die Hard on NES, and this was in my top three. Jetsons was the other game, and the third game was Bubble Bobble 2, which, incredibly, I did not see any loose copies of. There was a box copy but a little bit too rich for my blood, but I'm just really, really happy to have this. Unfortunately, there's some writing on it. It's kind of hard to see, and there's some there on the back, but I can get that off of there and make this, like, brand new, and it's definitely one of my top five now as far as games I thought I'd never owned. So um, that's everything I got. Um... Next show I'm going to hit up is in Mansfield, Ohio in two weeks. Um, I'm probably not going to be shopping for myself. I'll probably be shopping for 10-4. It's been a while since I've sold anything. And um, I'd really like to get back into doing that with the internet sales. So, um, you know, I say this every single time. If you have not been to the Midwest Gaming Conference, you owe it to yourself to make the trip at least once in your life. It is a really incredible experience and... You know, there's a lot of space, a lot of vendors. There's a lot of different things to see. It's not just video games. They have a board game library that you can go up front and check out all these really awesome board games and play them. Um, there's people there vending in Magic and Pokemon cards. Just all kinds of cool stuff. And, um, you know, this is my second year doing this. This year I thought was a little bit better than last year. And, you know, next year will be even better. So, hopefully... I'm able to go next year. It's in the books. We just got to get the money together. So I'm going to start saving now instead of waiting until the last four months to get my stuff together. But um, 
that's everything I got. And, you know, like I said, next stop is in Mansfield in two weeks. And then Corgs is coming up May 28th. So we'll be doing videos for those too. Till later.